Hello and welcome back to this channel. So today's tutorial is going to be about a very powerful tool in Illustrator that is the recolor artwork tool. So let's just get started. Okay, so I'm going to be using an illustration which I created in one of my previous videos. If you want to create this exact illustration, I have a video on my YouTube channel. I will link it in the description box below or add it as a card so you can go check it out. So I've used a clipping mask on my illustration so that there are no extra edges and stuff like that. You just need to know that this works on a clipping mask as well. So it's totally fine to uh, apply clipping mask and then decide to change your color. So let's just go ahead and uh, check out a tool. So you can access this recolor artwork tool in many different ways. First, click and select the artwork that you want to recolor. Sometimes you don't have to change the entire artwork. You just want some bits and pieces to have a different color. You can go ahead and individually select it using your shift key. But in mine, I'm going to select the entire artwork because I have based it on a theme of colors here and we're going to change that. You can access it directly on your menu. That's recolor artwork. Or you can also go to edit edit colors and then you have a lot of options here although i'm not going to go through all of these today but we're just going to check at recolor artwork just click on that so this pulls out a menu which has so many different things going on here okay step one when you know what color you want to replace it with for example you already have the hex code for it i will just go ahead and pick up some hex code from adobe color let's make it into some bluish thing so i'm just going to copy one color here you can go to your color.adobe.com and slash explore. If you don't know how to use these things, I have a video too on that. Go check it out. Link in the description and in the cards. So let's go here. And this was one of the darker blues. So I'm just going to go ahead and replace the darkest of green here with that one. So we're going to look for that. So now if I want to replace this color, you just have to go here and make sure this arrow is turned on for example if you can see here this black has no arrow that means that it cannot be replaced so you just have to double click on it and convert it into a proper arrow and then you can get a different color so let me go back to how it was so here if you double click you'll get this window and where you can paste your hex code right here and click ok and it's going to change into that particular color so that's how easy you do it. If you want to go back to the original setting, just click on this eyedropper tool here and everything is going to go back to its original settings. You can also click on cancel, but we don't want to do that. Okay, that's one way you can edit all these colors to a color palette that you already have. And what if you don't have a color palette? You just want to go ahead and experiment with things and stuff like that. You can click on edit. In here, you can see that this is the yellow and there are all these other colors as well. So now when I move this, all the yellow is going to be replaced with this color. But the other colors I haven't moved. So obviously they won't match the rest of the scheme. So what we can do is we can just go back and you see this link and unlink button. Just click on that. Now when you move your yellows, your rest of your artboard is also going to move like this. And there are some of these settings over here which you can change. If you want it to be a little brighter, you can always go ahead and increase this. And this makes it brighter and darker as such. And even the color wheel, there are two ways in which it is represented. This is the source saturation in hue on wheel. And this would be the opposite of it. And you can do so many things here. And let's change this to something like this and go back here. And you can make all these modifications. There's also other things that you want to look at because this is a different way in which your color wheel is going to be represented. If you are too confused with the one where each color is not separated out or there are a lot more colors in this color wheel here compared to this one. You can also choose this where you have a simple colors like this, whatever is there on the artboard. So I'm just going to go back to my original one because I think I like that better. So let me just go to this color wheel here and increase the brightness just like that and let's go back to assign right now the assign we already saw how we can actually modify this color individually with the hex code but there are so many things out here as well that you can experiment with okay let's look at this portion here which says colors so now it's set to auto think about it in this way you have a challenge where you have to or there's a client work where you're supposed to work with only a limited set of colors when you are working, you just created a lot of them, but sometimes you don't need so many different colors. For example, these two look very similar and these two look very similar as well. So we're going to change this, click on this button here, and it's going to start reducing colors. So you just click eight and just click seven. So there are seven colors right now. And you can see here, if you look closely, you can see there are two colors 
which have been merged together. If you want to separate it out into two separate colors over here, so you can just right click, separate colors into different rows, and then it's going to apply it differently. So you can even reduce it all the way down to two or three colors. You can see this is the third color that you have and all these colors have been put together. So basically this is how you can modify these things to make sure you have a proper color scheme or whatever as such. Let me just go back to all. Now we also have a lot of different things here. So this is like randomly change color order. So what it's going to do is it, so it's going to take all these colors which are already there in your artwork and it's just going to switch it up a little bit. So you can experiment with this. If you're not too sure how things should go, maybe you should try this out. And there's something like this. It randomly changes the saturation and brightness of these things. So as you can see, it's completely screwed up the image. But there's also one thing. You can click on some color when you cannot find something. You can just click on a color and you can click on this button here and it'll show you exactly where this color is you know so that's a good thing when you want to like change some color to some other color this would be a perfect um, way to do that so let me go ahead and click on the eyedropper tool because i don't want to modify these things let me just uncheck that now i can see the whole thing let's quickly go back to the edit setting because i want to show you guys more so one thing i forgot to mention earlier is like as soon as you start working on this it's always good to create a color group because then you can go back to whatever you have or you have an idea of how you changed your artwork and stuff like that so the way to create a color group is just open up this tool and go ahead and click on this folder here and it's going to create the artwork color all the colors that you have in your artwork and you can see all the colors right here okay that being said let's go back to edit now and in here, you can see that it is an HSB mode. So you can actually change this to CMYK or, you know, web RGB or many other things or global adjust, which is like much better. You can adjust the saturation. You can also work with the brightness a little bit and obviously make it warmer or cooler or whatever you want and luminosity. And you can make a lot of changes here as well. And then you have a new set of colors that you see here and you can click on add and then we'll create one more um, group of artwork colors so it's basically that's how we do it oh make sure that you have this checked on because otherwise um, so you won't be able to actually see it changing uh, you know in real time okay I'll just go back to this one and I'm going to go ahead and change this oops not just the pink or whatever so I'm just going to go ahead and link and maybe make it blue and you know I'm just going to change my saturation or brightness luminosity and change this up a little bit oh, I, I think I like my original one better than any of these things actually but yeah what can you do um just going to change some saturation level I guess brightness okay All right, I guess that should be okay. And I have a new one. I'm just going to add it to my swatches because just because I can. Okay, so as you see, these things haven't modified anything. That's because it's actually an image. I just want to show you like what the original color palette was. And this is how the new color palette looks like. And let's click on OK. And now, as you can see, let's go back or out of the isolation mode. I was in the isolation mode. So this is your original artwork, which had all these colors and stuff like that. And this is the one that we modified. So basically you can do a lot of modification when it comes to editing the color on your artboard. It's something very similar to Photoshop, where you can go to your hue and saturation settings and actually change the complete artwork to look like a completely different thing. So you can use this tool basically to like create like a maybe a set of patterns or something like that which are in different colors or like I said you can also go ahead and choose only one item in your uh, for example I just want this mountain range to look different so I can just go to edit and uh, recolor artwork and in here I can just go ahead and change the mountain to look something different like I don't like the brown but yeah whatever so red or something like that and then it will look different so it's basically super easy if you want to recolor artwork in Illustrator and you don't have to go ahead and pick each of them and have to recolor them or something like that. 
And once you're done with your recoloring, if you go to your swatches now, that is window and then swatches. Let me just bring this down a little bit. So you can see all these three groups of colors that we had on, you know, saved into our artwork, into folders earlier. Okay, I guess that brings us to the end of this tutorial and I do hope you liked it. And if you did, please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to hit the subscribe and the notification bell. And um, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.